everyone. I'm very impressed that many of you attended this uh, book clubs. It's either you're interested to see the book or maybe to see Secretary Dar, but unfortunately it's not good. Anyway, um, Dr. Glenn Gregoria, Dr. Reyes Pascal, Dr. Karen Gregoria, Dr. Reside, Mom, Ali Silaga, Jari, Dr. Jari, I call him Jari because we were during those times at Silk Picard when we are still young. <laughs> How is I put Karen? My colleagues from Erie. Uh, Dr. Rayner Wasman is here, my mentor on climate change. Martin Gomert is here, our post harvest expert, my colleagues also in the world. And other theory uh, colleagues here. <laughs> also, my colleagues from UPLB, of course. I mentioned I work in the university after I graduated in 2000. But before I start my presentation, I would like to thank many people behind the completion of this book and the book launch that we had today. To Dr. Leos Gaschan, of course, the program leader of Southeast Asia, uh, SICAP Southeast Asia, uh, for pushing me, for pushing me, and my other co-authors to write the book. I remember sometime in February 2018 when my contract to Erie was about to be finished. You know, in Erie, when your contract is to be finished, you need to find other resources. So I have to approach Leo and ask him whether there is some work for me, uh, especially in Vietnam, since I worked in Vietnam under, of course, my other former boss, Rainer Wasman. And, uh, other colleagues from the uh, Submergence Tolerant Price Program. And uh, because of that, my experience in South Vietnam, I, I asked him if there is something for me in Vietnam that I can work also. And he said yes, yes, some uh, projects in Vietnam, particularly the design and implementation of these uh, action plans and climate smart map for rice production in selected provinces of South Vietnam. He also mentioned that we, he helped Vietnam to develop a book on climate smart agriculture. And he asked me to do the same for the Philippines. And so I got two terms of preference for me. And I thank for that. So we have to look now. Have you been involved in rice and corn-based farming systems? and in some sort of conservation projects while uh, as a researcher and scientist at UPLG and having written and authored some books along these areas, I thought it is very easy for me to write a completely because I have a lot of references. But as I go along collecting all my references, putting them together, it's very challenging. And so, I sought the help of my wife, of course, being a soil science and uh, environmental science uh, expert. And I would like the companion to be not too heavy in technical matters, but also uh, something that will entice everybody to read. So I also sought the help of uh, me, Sarkos, who happened to be a dead constant. You know, if you blend the ideas of the technical man or women and uh, social development specialists, you could come up with a good output, which is very attractive to me. And I guess Karen will, will agree with that because he's also a coach. So that's how we formed the team. And uh, good enough, they agreed. Okay, go ahead. It's a good team. And so we have we are we were able to come up with this page. So if we have the our co-authors, Dr. Reyes Pascal, as we mentioned, uh, Dr. Joe Lapios and May Santos, 
I would like to thank Dr. Glenn Lugoyo, the director, for hosting today's activity and for willingly printing the book that we will have this afternoon. Leo is asking also, where's the book? I asked him, I don't have also the book. I said, it's a surprise. Everybody will be surprised later. <laughs> So, others are asking me, where's the book, Robbie? Well, uh, maybe Dr. Gregorio will give us later. But it's a surprise for me. So, I would like also to thank the team of Bimbo Uliana. Kim, where's Bimbo? Okay, good there. Kim, Azame, and the rest of the uh, knowledge management unit group or culture group to the research group led by uh, Pez and Naira and their team and to the rest of the circus staff for preparing the book to the form we have now and for the book launch that we have today this afternoon. I would also like to thank Secretary William Dar. I remember when Leo asked me to draft a letter to Dr. Dar requesting our request for them to go publish the book. So I had to prepare not a very long letter, but only a page, I guess. So I, in that letter, we asked them why we them to request the book. And of course, we also mentioned that this compendium was already presented during one of the quarterly meetings of the DA System Wide Climate Change Program and Pickup Committee on Climate Change, sometime in February. So, at least the DA already know what the book is all about. And uh, that time I didn't know also that he was in Russia with the president. So, I sent the, the email to him on October 2, around 3 p.m., and to, our, to my surprise, he responded at 5 p.m. and to go. Romy, this is approved. Thanks, no real meeting. So thank you, Dr. Dar and the DA family. I would also like to thank Dr. Ray Oral Picard, now represented by Dr. Talon, of DOS Picard, for co-publishing also the book. To the 19 contributors of the book that uh, we have now, I request them to stand up again to be recognized. Martin, uh, our colleagues from Uri, police from CNSU, okay, so please stand up. So, the first of CNSU from UPN Group, uh, there you go, the next one, the rest of the Sabai Group. So this is a collective effort of the different experts. So now that I've introduced them to you, they will be the one answering your questions. <laughs> also, mention about the workshop held in February, and that was organized with the group of uh, Naira. So I would like to request them to stand up also to be recognized again. Dr. Rainer Rosman is one of them. Colleagues from UPLB also. So that is about 36 or 38 participants from the different uh, organizations. So the book is not just prepared for us, it's also a collective effort from the different experts. Of course, to Mom Amy Cervantes, the editor of the book. I remember when May and I always come to meet her. We always received a, a number of edited pages with yellow and pink postcards, <laughs> plus a lot of pages with red marks. And we cannot count them anymore. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> of course, to Easy Bernardo. Still, uh, eight, I said, I said Bernardo. Who, who made the design of the book very nice and I guess I, I believe you will also agree when you see the real book later. 
So if you need somebody who would like to design your book, a coming book, approach Leo. That he said that. Yeah. <laughs> but Leo doesn't have a commission for that. He said it's really very uh, good on that. Okay. And of course, to my wife, Joe, Celine, and to my children, to our children, I'm sorry. <laughs> children, sir. Because I came from a people shopping group, so I have to make the money. So three of them are here. I want to understand Raymond. Yeah. My daughter, Jean. And our youngest daughter, who? Oh, she just left because she has a class. Two of our sons are not here. One is based in the U.S. He's a captain in the U.S. Army. And my son, Jakey, is an awesome adult. Now, going back to my presentation, I guess it's the highlight, that's all you can So, the book is all about compendium of climate resilient agriculture technologies and approaches in the Philippines. Some are asking why climate resilient, what happened to climate smart agriculture? Leo will answer that. <laughs> and Miss Lana, I guess. Because that's the key. Uh, terminology for this kind of climate, uh, climate change, uh, adaptation and mitigation activities in the field. So what is the compendium about? What's the significance? Why did we write it? Two reasons. One is mentioned by Leo, there are already existing CRA technologies and approaches in different publications and references. And the second reason is that we would like to integrate and consolidate these technologies and approaches into one reference so that it will be easy and be available to many who would like to access and read it. The other question is, who are the users of these technologies and approaches to companion? So, this will be the civil society leaders and practitioners, the development workers from the government and non-government organizations working on climate change, the researchers and scientists from the academy, national and international research institutions, the officials and policy makers who will be uh, deciding on how to use this and disseminate this technology. So what is the book about? Now that you see how the book applies. It's just a dream of it. It's about 353 pages only. And at the background is the collection of my wife, the Marie's flower. So the compendium provides an overview of the climate resilient agriculture technologies and approaches in the field. It also provides the challenges in the context of climate change. Thirdly, it also provides a summary of the Philippine policies, strategies, programs, and plans related to climate resilience. And the last one is also provide the natural and socioeconomic condition of different agroecological systems in the Philippines. So we were able to document 32 technologies and about 18 approaches with a photo and a brief description and a brief methodology and how to implement it. Plus, of course, why this technology's approach is considered as a climate change adaptation or mitigation strategy. These technologies and approaches were, uh, were uh, collected and we call group them where, whether it's applicable to a certain agroecosystem. And these agroecosystems were based from the Department of Agriculture 
and DNR classification and description. And these eco uh, ecosystems include the lowland, which is irrigated and rainfed, the upland, the hilly land, the highland, and the coastal ecosystem. Given that the ICT technology is in, we also try to consolidate some technologies that will fall under information technology management. And that compose the different technologies and the groupings in the company. As mentioned, what after we completed the draft, a stakeholder workshop was held here at CIRCA. Thanks again to CIRCA for that. And that was held in January 31, February 1, two-day workshop. In order to make the assessment prioritization and wrapping of these technologies and approaches. And this stakeholder workshop was participated in by different experts from the fields of agriculture, forestry, coastal and marine management, as well as information technology management. And you could see even the famous farmer of the north, Dr. Rex Navarro is the announcement. Now, what is the tools that we use? We use the uh, multi criteria analysis, and in terms of the ranking, we use the Likert scaling system, where in the negative value includes, uh, indicates uh, reduction, and the positive value indicates uh, increase. And that was actually suggested by Leo. So, for a particular intervention, we try to assess it based on its contribution to productivity, based on the risk of climate change, and also in terms of reduction to greenhouse gas emission. In terms of the implementation feasibility, the guiding question was that is the intervention technically, fiscally, ethically, and administratively feasible. And so this category was also uh, scored and run accordingly. In terms of the adoption barriers of these interventions, the guiding question is that was that can the different external and internal constraints affect the level of adoption of farmers and other stakeholders. So these indicators were also scored and run accordingly. In terms of incentive mechanisms, the guiding question was that does the intervention motivate and encourage or encourage farmers and other stakeholders to adopt and replicate the CRA technologies and approaches? According to oh sorry whether they were given a subsidy, a credit, in terms of capacity building, and DPS to market. And finally, the question of who are the institutions, players, in disseminating the technology. I guess that's the also the mentioned by Mami Nanda uh, earlier. And also included in the compendium are another two chapters. The third chapter is about, four chapters about promotion and dissemination strategies of CRA. So we try to suggest some strategies in the dissemination of these uh, technologies and approaches. And the final chapter is mentioned by Leo, because it's the one who wrote it, and so your questions will be directed to him. <laughs> it is about transforming Philippine agriculture under climate change. And there are seven strategies mentioned here. One is implementing suitable CRA technologies and approaches. Uh, through integrated clusters and landscape approach. And the third one is empowering farmers and farmer organizations. 
The next one is Go Digita. And the other one is Mainstreaming Low Emission Development. And the next one is Improve Access to Finance. And the next one is Enhance Social Inclusion. And finally, Educating the Consumers and Producers. So these are the seven strategies as suggested in terms of transforming Philippine agriculture. However, the challenge in transforming Philippine agriculture to cope with climate change is not, is not just developing new ideas, approaches, technologies, and practices. The challenge is how to attain a scale that can create an impact on the lives of the Filipino farmers and economy. And as I mentioned by Dr. Laga, you need to scale from the village, the town, the province, and even up to region. And then that's where you will see the impact of this transformation. The interrelated complementary actions must be harnessed to achieve agricultural transformation. And four of them were suggested by Leo, and also mentioned it a while ago. One is we need to work in details of our plans. Second, we need to strengthen farmer groups, private sector, and government partnership. Third one is we need, we need innovative approaches to engage farmers and private sector. And finally, we need to mainstream transformation efforts into the country's policies, programs, and investment plans. With that, what is the next step? What are the steps to way forward? Of course, we need to put this on the ground so that the target quantities can be provided with basic information on adaptation and mitigation strategies in the various agricultural systems in the Philippines. And thank you, Mam Ilaga, for offering that kind of uh, collaboration. And we are open. The experts are here. So it's already available. The resources are here. We only need good program and good funding. So, with this, we would like to dedicate this book to Dr. Arturo Gomez, one of the pioneer scientists of the multiple cropping systems in the Philippines, a former professor and vice chancellor of UPLB and the PIP director of CIRTA. He is also our first boss, my wife and I, when we were recruited in 1980 after graduation. And Jojo is one of our boss there at the time, who gave us a hard time whether we could not meet us or not. <laughs> so to many, Dr. Gomez is our beloved mentor. And to most of us, his former staff, our Nino Sakasan. And we are one of them. So finally, the book is dedicated to Dr. Art Gomez, in recognition of his vision, the importance and relevance of his work in making our farmers climate resilient. Thank you.